Hello, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of ventilation. So um, I wanted to talk about the major muscles that are involved in ventilation. And one um, muscle, and you can sort of think about it as one muscle, but it's actually a group of hundreds of muscles. And they are called the external intercostals. And they um, connect the ribs together on the external surface of the ribs and they assist with inspiration so they are considered a primary ventilation okay so we have the external intercostals now second is you know I'll draw these in pink is the internal intercostals and these um, sort of run along the inside of the ribs and they actually only take part in ventilation during forced exhalation so they are actually not considered a primary ventilation muscle because they're only involved in forced exhalation they're not involved in us in in normal uh, resting what's called tidal breathing and I'll talk about tidal breathing in a, in a little bit so internal intercostals so again if you're breathing in and out right now and you're doing it in, in a rela relaxed fashion your external intercostals are being used a little bit but your internal intercostals are not being used at all unless you do a forceful exhalation <sighs> like that then you are using your internal intercostals and only then so if you're you know coughing or you're breathing very very hard maybe with very vigorous activity you you will be using those internal intercostals okay now the third muscle that I want to talk about is the diaphragm and the diaphragm is this big dome of a muscle that is at the bottom of the chest. And this is probably the most important muscle in, um, in breathing. Now, the diaphragm, interestingly enough, is actually uh, you can see that because it's dome shaped it is longer in its dome shape and when it flattens out it is actually shorter and you know those of you who have a um, engineering or math background could probably show me formulas to prove this but you know the sh basics is that the shortest distance between a two points is a straight line right so the closer we get to a straight line the shorter um, the distance is so basically when we are starting out with a very deep or steep curve like this the fibers the muscle fibers of this curved muscle are going to be very very long and as we straighten out and approach this straight line the muscle fibers are going to be shorter and shorter so when the diaphragm is relaxed it is in this very steep dome shape and when the muscle fibers contract then it flattens out and that's in its contracted form okay so that's relaxed and that's contracted so when the diaphragm contracts that is when we breathe in so why do we breathe in well okay so if you contract the diaphragm and the diaphragm goes from its dome shape down to its flattened shape then this will increase the area or the volume in the chest for instance you know when the diaphragm was relaxed this volume in here may have been say three liters but when the volume when the diaphragm contracts and flattens out then this volume will expand to 
you know, maybe 3.8 liters. So what's the difference between the two? 0 0.8 liters is the difference, right? So the breath that the person has inhaled is 0 0.8 liters. So that is the ventilatory volume of that breath. And that was made by displacement of the diaphragm. Now that's not including what could happen if we expanded the chest this way and this way laterally right that's only expansion on the bottom so during normal breathing we actually do expand the chest laterally and that is because of our external intercostal muscles now you know it's interesting because you would think that something that seems fairly simple like breathing we would have a good understanding of how this works mechanically but actually we don't but the theories about how the external intercostals increase our lung volume or our chest volume um, there are is is twofold one is that one is that the external intercostals um, are actually sort of the sheet of muscles that attach to the spinal cord or to not to the cord to the vertebrae of the spine and they when they pull up they when they contract they pull the ribs up and out they pull the ribs back towards the spine and that causes the ribs because they're attached to the spine to swing up so you can see they're sort of hinged at the spine so this causes them to all swing up like this now the other theory and these are probably both involved to some degree now the ribs are not straight they're a little bit more oval than straight and when the external intercostals the external intercostals connect to to one another they connect like this to the tip of the rib back to sort of the middle of the rib and the ribs actually sort of rotate on each other on themselves and when they rotate they tend when the external intercostals shorten they actually pull the tips of the ribs up so the ribs rotate and this is sort of a cutaway view of what the ribs would look like Okay, so the ribs are actually rotating. And both of these things, the ribs swinging um, on the hinges of the vertebrae and rotating on themselves cause the chest wall to expand outwards when the external intercostals contract. So the external intercostals contract, cause the chest wall to expand outwards, and you increase this from you know 3.8 to maybe 4.2 liters, and then we've increased the ventilatory volume to 1.2 liters. Okay. So, um, and then when we breathe out, the diaphragm has already contracted to breathe in. So all that needs to happen is the diaphragm relaxes and during a relaxed breath there is no there are no muscles involved at all the exhalation is completely passive and the forces that cause the exhalation are actually due to forces within the lungs themselves that cause the lungs to want to collapse and they are the lungs are actually made up of um, tissues with elastin in them that tend to make the lungs want to pull in on themselves and so there's always this sort of negative force that's pulling the lungs in towards themselves and this causes the um, us to be able to exhale without any muscle involvement so again the internal intercostals sort of do the opposite of what the external intercostals do but they only do so during forced exhalation during a relaxed exhalation it is the passive forces from the elastic uh, forces within the lung tissues themselves that are due to elastin and actually there's some forces that are caused by water molecules being attracted to each other and this is a significant force as well 
and we'll talk about that a little more when we talk a little bit about surfactant in a later video. Okay, thank you very much. In the next video I am going to talk about uh, normal pulmonary volumes and capacities and I will see you then.